my guest today had followed their original career desire, we wouldn't be here talking to him now. Despite having one of the most powerful voices in pop, he originally wanted to be an orthopaedic surgeon, but he claims that his maths wasn't up to scratch. Medicine's loss was definitely music's gain, when, aged 14, on a holiday to Pontins, he fell in love with performing when he sang Lady Madonna a cappella and got a huge response from the audience. His path was decided, and he first came to prominence in the 80s as lead singer of a band originally The Makers, The Cut, The Audience, and then finally Spandau Ballet, an early incarnation which saw them employed as the house band for the legendary Blitz Kids, before eventually becoming the band Spandau Ballet that we know so well. From their first hit, to cut a long story short, in 1980, up until they first disbanded in 1990, he lent his powerful voice to hits such as I'll Fly For You, Only When You Leave, the timeless ballads True and Gold, and of course, the iconic Powerful Through the Barricades. In that period, they had 16 hits in Ireland, spending 68 weeks in the Irish charts. In 92, he launched his solo career with the album State of Play and in the intervening years have seen a further 11 albums, worldwide solo tours with the fabulous Tony Hadley Band, in addition to Spandau reunion gigs and collaborations with other artists. He's hosted countless radio shows. He's judged on TV talent shows. He did his time in the jungle on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here in 2015. In 2017, he left Spandau for good, but in 2019, he was awarded an MBE for his services to charity. He performed at Forever Young Winterfest with us in 2019 and delighted the locals when arriving at Cork Airport, he did an impromptu duet with a local school choir who were performing their Christmas carol. <laughs> Also stepped in last year after the Boomtown Rats had to cancel due to illness and we cannot wait to have him back at Forever Young this summer on the Saturday. Ladies and gentlemen, it's just the most incredible man, known many to big tone, it is the sublime Tony Hadley. Wow, I don't know what to say after that. <laughs> I don't think I've done enough in my life. I've got more to know, I've got a lot more to do. Oh. Uh, a lot more to do, a lot more to achieve and stuff and... Uh... Yeah, it's, it's been it's been a pretty varied life, I have to say, and uh, but one one in which, yeah, I mean, I, th I think you've got to go out and strive to do whatever you can. I mean, you know, when I meet young people today and they say, yeah, I say, what do you want to do? And uh, and some of them say they want to get into music and stuff like that. And I say, if you've got a degree of talent and you've got the ambition, then you have to aim as high as you can, and you have to push it to the nth degree. Sometimes you'll make it, sometimes you won't. You just never know. But, um, but you have to, I always just say, follow the follow your dream. You have to do that. Absolutely. Well, as, as an orthopaedic surgeon myself, okay, of the animal kind, but, uh, you know, I followed my dream into setting up a, a music festival in Ireland, and here we are, always reach for the stars. You know, you, you never know what you can achieve. You're the only, you're the only limit to your own um, destiny. I think I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, funny enough, my my youngest daughter, so five beautiful kids. My youngest, Genevieve, from the, the day she could speak, she's always wanted to be a vet, <laughs> and she wants a, a giraffe. Her favourite. She sponsors a little giraffe in the back. Oh. She sponsors a leopard. She gets National Geographic uh, animals. Every. I mean, she's animal crazy nice. and. Uh, and her cousin's just qualified as a vet, so sorry, I'm digressing from music, but that's what she wants. Well, um, I mean, my pet story so far um, from from my few uh, bits of knowing you, Tony, was when you came and joined us at Winterfest, not just the choir in Cork Airport, which was just gorgeous, but uh, as, a, as a new promoter, you know, having your headline at Winterfest, then running backstage to check you were okay and you had everything you needed and finding you... There in your boxer shorts, giving a huge hug to everybody, <laughs> having just come off stage. Hello, it's all right. Shall we come in? In your boxer shorts. So uh, I think that just speaks of your huge character. Well, I'm I'm a pretty relaxed kind of bloke, really. I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm horizontal. Um, I mean, I am incredibly ambitious, and 
you know, at the moment I'm I'm off in, in the minute just to go to the studio. We're sort of we've mixed probably about a quarter of the album, but uh, we're finishing it off ready for sometime next year. So I'm always, you know, there's a lot of people these days that say, I'm not going to make albums anymore. They don't sell anymore. But, you know, I love writing songs and I'm a great believer in, you know, producing new music as Absolutely. as well as singing all the hits, which I love. You know, you mentioned True Gold, Barricades and Only When You Leave. Um, but it's good to say, you know, guys, I know you like the old stuff, but check out the new song. Hope you like it. Um, and that's, that's, that's good for me. Otherwise, I've become my own. I've become like a karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, your your voice needs to be heard and your your music needs to be heard. And I love the new stuff as much as I love the old classics. So a load of questions that have been sent in. As I said, we had hundreds, so I've narrowed it down as best I can. Uh, you're very popular here in Ireland, Tony. But um, so Thank you. <laughs> a question actually from me, I'll start with. Back in the day, you appeared in a photo story, which was a regular in our day as teens. I can't remember if it was Jackie or Blue Jeans. I actually still have it somewhere. How did that come about? Well, I was working at IPC magazines and I knew a, a girl who worked at the offices opposite and we were just in a canteen together and a guy came up and he said, look, I'm a photographer for, um, I, can't remember, I can't remember what the, anyway, he said, but look, we do photo stories. Would you like to be in our photo story? I was, yeah, all right. All right. So, <laughs> I just said, I say yes to a lot of things, but it was great fun. It was actually really good fun. I mean, everything's kind of, you know, <laughs> it's all a bit, it's very staged, but it, but it was uh, it was great, actually. Yeah, it was kind of interesting. Yeah, but that is true. Yeah, uh, cool. Um, and what was the legendary Blitz Club like from, from somebody that had such an important part in it? Well, it was great fun. I mean, there was a, I mean, punk was wonderful. I mean, I love punk. Um, you know, Soho back then. <laughs> Was a little bit less salubrious than it is there. It was it was it's pretty rough, but but there was a there, you know punk was happening and and it was, a, it was a magical time. You know, I was in a band. We were a kind of power pop punk band called the Makers. Um, so for us, it, 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 it was a great great time. But then that sort of slowly morphed into what would become, I suppose, the New Romantics, and they had the Billy's Club and the Blitz Club, and it was just. Great fun! It was uh, Steve Strange took it over. I think it was on a Tuesday night, uh, and it was a wine bar during the day. And then by by the night time, you had the glitterati of London. So uh, dressed yeah. up like peacocks and dandies and everything else, and <laughs> but having a good time. We we didn't all sit around talking about Nietzsche and Freud and <laughs> existentialism. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, funnily enough. So when you were 17, you met one of your heroes, Frank Sinatra. Um, what was that like to meet meet such a, you know, a legend? And was he just amazing? Well, it was incredible. My mum and dad um, would always play music, especially on Sundays when mum was preparing Sunday lunch and stuff. So there was always Sinatra, Tony Bennett, Jack Jones, Ella Fitz, Johnny Mathis, all those legendary Mel Torme, great singers. And my mum said, she said, look, I know... You you know, you love your punk and David Bowie and Queen and everything else, but check out these guys as well because if you want to be a vocalist, you can learn a lot from the way their style and everything else and their interpretation. And so so I was massively into swing, and at 17, um, yeah, I had the good fortune to meet Frank Sinatra. Wow. Just I literally just ran backstage and shook his hand. And uh, <laughs> what was quite weird is because he said to me, he said, oh, he said, oh you know, good, good to see you, son. What do you do? I said, well, I'm at school. But I'm in a band, and it's my ambition to one day play the Royal Albert Hall. And I want to—I'm a singer. I want to be like you. And he said, "Some well, you know, fill your boots, kind of thing." And shook my hand, and Aww. and that was it. Then six years later, Ben Abaley played the Royal Albert Hall, Fantastic. and I stood on the stage at the sound check and thought, "Yes, yes, I've done it. <laughs> That's yeah. it." Oh, one of those gratitude moments in life that you never forget, hey. Yeah, but he was lovely. He was absolutely charming. He, he was lovely. Okay. Oh, that's so nice to know. Um, Spandau's videos were always epic affairs. What was your favourite shoot from those days and why? Uh, well, I suppose it'd probably have to be one of the first ones to cut long story short because that was our first single and all of a sudden, wow, we're making a video, we're in a pop band and, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, it's all very exciting. I loved making Half Life for You because 
I mean, it, basically, it got to video wars because you, you, you know, when I saw Simon Le Bon stuck on the front of a yacht <laughs> with an Antichrist suit singing, her name is Rio, and you know, <laughs> and looking, oh, what? And then save a prayer and, and, and the beautiful, I mean, fantastic videos. That then started video wars. So it was, where do you want to go in the world? And um, and for our flight, you went to New Orleans uh, during Mardi Gras, mm. and that was just incredible. And then again, highly strong with um, we went to Hong Kong, and uh, so that was that was good. And we were shooting in thirty five mil as well, so it was really filmic, uh, and it was just beautiful. Yeah. So, um, but they're pro- probably yeah, story, fly, and highly strong. My three favorite videos. <laughs> Peter's asked, how hot was it in that coat at Live Aid? And what was Live Aid really like for you? <laughs> the answer is bloody hot. <laughs> he looked it. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Well, we found we've actually got it now. So I actually found it. And um, so we're going to auction it off at some time. But no, it was it was um uh, I was my, my my late great friend Jane Cronin, she she designed and made the, the I mean we no one thought it was gonna be that hot. I mean, when does it get that hot in England, you know? And um so I wore the 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 coat, it was double thickness leather, it was so hot, I can't tell you. It was an incredible day. I mean, it was you know, people talk about music saying, you know, just a bunch of you know, dressed up peacocks and pop stars who don't really care. We're all sort of too invested in ourselves. But here was something that was quite radical and different. You know, London, Philadelphia, satellite technology, new technology, bands, Queen. I mean, you name it. It was just incredible. Mm. And uh, 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 Prince Charles, Princess Diana, all the, the, the Prime Minister, everybody, all the dignitaries were there. And all your heroes were backstage as well. So I'm just going around going, hi, how are you? Wow. You know, it's like, I was like a kid in a sweet shop. But it was also very nerve-wracking as well because you didn't want to muck up. And mm. um, and the two bands that I really remember, I was at the side of the stage when Quo started with Rocking All Over the World, and that was just with Janice Long. Uh, it was lovely. And um, that was a moment. And then when Queen, Queen. came on. Yeah, blew everyone And I remember away. going to say to see the Queen Freddie and the boys and say, oh, good luck, lads, you know, have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> my, my good luck. Um, okay, well, John has asked, uh, back in the day, uh, Spandau lived for a time in Dublin and rehearsed in an old cinema in Dunleary. We used to sit outside and listen. It was great. A, sto- a story went round that you were in a local pub one evening and started singing and an old guy asked you to leave because no singing was allowed. Can Tony remember, is this true or not? That's a question from John. Do you know what? I drank so much in Dublin, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I do remember Dan Leary and stuff. And, uh, yeah, we rehearsed in the old cinema. We were rehearsed in the Through the Barricades album there. And uh, we spent seven and a half months in Dublin. I was living in Donnybrook by the rugby club. Uh, and it probably is true that I was in a pub and probably got told off to <laughs> wouldn't be the first time I was told to get out. <laughs> so, but we had I've got very, very I mean, Dublin in nineteen was it eighty four eighty five, I think it was, was such a different place mm. to today. Mm. It really, really was. And uh but we had a magical time and everybody was was absolutely fantastic. And uh yeah, we had a we had a good time. Brilliant. Um, well, you wowed the crowd at Forever Young last year, not just with your set, but when you decided to come out and duet with our tribute band Queen. How did that come about? Do you know, I don't really know. Because I I, I, he looks exactly like Freddie. They're, they're mm. such a nice bunch of guys. And he was quite incredible, actually. I thought he was amazing. And um, I, I think he just said, do you want to come to see one? Yeah, all right, OK, fine. <laughs> fantastic yeah. really really great yeah they are well we we um we do a, a battle of the band so the, uh, our audience vote for the best tribute of the weekend and the following year they come on the main stage so queen won of course and they get a slot on the main stage and i 
you know, I think that's going to be fabulous for them because it really is a main stage sort of show. The, the music, the you know, as you say, his Freddie is is just amazing. So that's something to look forward well, to. But it was uncanny because, you know, I, I knew Fred, you know, really well. And when I saw him, it was... It was it's a little bit spooky, I know. actually. He's got he, all the mannerisms. <laughs> everything he does, he just does Freddy. Everything with his mm. mouth and uh, just he just looks his whole persona. He's Fred. Uh, yeah. It's quite incredible, yeah. actually, yeah. Mark asks, which artist would you have loved to work with that you never got a chance to? <clears throat> um, well, Frank Sinatra would have been one of the top ones. Um, I've worked with a lot of artists, actually. I'd, I'd love to do something with Daryl Hall. Um, I'm a massive Hall and Oates fan. Since 1975, when I saw him at the uh, Hammersmith Apollo, <laughs> Hammy Odeon was there. Yeah. <laughs> and I've met uh, Daryl and John a few times over the years. Great couple of guys, and I'm, I'm a huge fan. Also, Steve Perry Journey. What a voice! Oh, what a voice. Mm. Uh, but you know, they're, they're uh, you know, t- Tony Bennett. I'd, I'd love to do so. Jack Jones. I'd love to do so with him. I mean, I've had the great fortune to sort of work with people like Alice Cooper, James Brown, Joe Cocker over the years. And uh, so so I've met loads of fantastic people. Same with Freddie um, in Auckland in New Zealand, which yeah. was amazing. Uh, I, think I forgot all the words on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it, you know, so there's – I think there's some great – but I tell you, one of my favourite bands at the moment is Sam Fender. I think he's a terrific artist. He really is, and it's it's great to see a, a a really good, solid band and artist there. He's great songs. Obviously, Springsteen influenced them, and I'd love to work with Springsteen because he's an absolute <laughs> legend. Um, he's got also Anastasia. Actually, I love Anastasia. I think she's got an amazing voice, and Cher. Cher. There's an. See, they're all popping up now. You, I started on a war. Not, you know, <laughs> Who would no. it be? Now you can't stop. That's it. In fact, you want to work with everybody. <laughs> oh, there's quite a selection there. Uh, so there's hopefully there's some decent collaborations that can still come about. You mentioned briefly, actually, the you know the old rivalry and the video wars and everything. The whole Duran yeah. Spandau thing was you know was to the eighties what the Blur and Oasis thing was to the nineties. You know, there always seems to be a little bit of that that goes through. Um, music periods. So Andrea has asked, um, if the opportunity arose for charity, would you and Simon Le Bon consider recreating the Two Tribes video from Frankie Goes to Hollywood as a jokey um, nod to the rivalry between the bands? Well, Simon wouldn't do it because he'd lose. <laughs> um, but... <laughs> What were you taking, love? <laughs> That's a weird one. I um, know. I mean, I'm, I'm Simon the Boys. I've, I've, I've been. I'm a massive Duran fan. Actually, I always, always love their music. Always love the fact they're never afraid to try new technology and new ways of, you know, just always creating different sounds. Um, and and uh, Simon, Simon's, a, Simon's a great guy. We're we're both pretty big, tough fellas. So uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how it turned out. <laughs> Uh, well, as I said, we had loads of questions. Some of them, you know, uh, they're, they're various. But the, I thought that one was an unusual one. Interesting to throw in. Um, you seem as comfortable singing pop music as big band classics. Which style do you prefer? Well, funny you say, I, I just did, for the first time in a long time, I worked with the Ronnie Scott's orchestra. We did the Cheltenham Jazz Festival. And um, and it was great. to. to I made a, a swing album a few years ago. And it was it was really good to go and visit some bit of Sinatra, Tony Bennett, Jack Jones. It was it was it was super cool. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I don't think there's one I prefer. Uh, and they're two. I wouldn't say different styles of singing, but obviously the swing stuff is a lot more kind of laid back and and just your approach is slightly different. Where when you're doing the pop stuff, it's it's a lot tougher. Um, generally, the songs are higher, so you're really having to, you know, kind of give it give it a lot of welly. Yeah. But um, yeah, but I went from the Cheltenham Jazz Festival to Basildon to do. I think it was called Fantasia, so we did a festival there as well. So <laughs> I had to put my swing hat on, then my rock hat. So, uh, but, but I just, just love singing generally. Through the Barricades was famously written about the troubles in Northern Ireland. Does it hit differently? Do you think singing it in Ireland than elsewhere? 
Yeah, I think so. I think as a sort of slight, you know, to use the cliche poignancy, because of what went on in in Ireland, um, and, and it was based on that. Um, but then I, you know, it's, it's it's one of those songs that's very emotional. I can, I can get quite emotional when I sing it. Um, we had one situation once uh, we when the Berlin Wall was coming down in in uh, Berlin. Literally, the wall was coming down. We did a concert that night, and there wasn't a dry. That you know, the people were really getting very emotional about it because of the the fall of the Berlin Wall. But the one that really, really got me was a father holding his little girl up at that particular song, and with a placard saying, "We love, we miss you, mummy." Oh, God! That was. That'd that be a was, mm. I just, I just couldn't look, you know, because that was, oh, oh, that was just so emotional. Awful. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, so it, beautiful but awful. Yeah, tragedy, beauty. Yeah. yeah. It, that song carries a lot of weight, you know, whether it's in Ireland or, or wherever it is. It just carries a hell of a lot of weight. Yeah, it's, it's it absolutely. It's one of my favourite songs ever. It's beautiful. Yeah, and, it's my favourite. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, especially, and I'm a big fan of Lily. So you and Lily, when you do it together, it's just, oh, it's amazing. So uh, you performed the lead role in Jesus Christ Superstar on radio opposite Roger Daltrey. Have you ever had yeah. the desire to take to the stage and uh, perform in musical theatre? No, not really. Wearing a chamois leather loincloth. I did it in Paint Me Down video, but I'm not going to do it on stage in front of me. I just think. I mean, it was it was a it was a, it was a wonderful thing because working with Roger Daltrey, he was uh, and Francis Raphael, and it was just it was incredible. And and because Roger had a rock voice and I got kind of more of a smooth voice, it just really really worked. Mm. Um, you know, I did Billy Flynn in, in the West End, and I proved I could do it. Um, you know, I, it, it's not something I want to do, and I've been offered to do loads of touring things with theatres. If I'm really honest. I love just working with my band or, or a swing band or whatever, but but with a fabulous TH band and we're always going all over the world. We have a great time together. And I don't the theatre side of things is not although I loved it, it's not what I want to do permanently. Um you've such a distinctive and powerful voice that hasn't lost any of its impact over the years. How do you look after your voice? Lubrication. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, how do I look after it? Uh, just warm up. I mean, I say to, I can't believe it when I meet singers who don't warm up their voices. It, it, it's like trying to run a 100-metre sprint, you know, without stretching. It's just crazy, or, or a footballer or whatever. And so so I do lots of lots of warm-up exercises before, um, you know, good 20, 25 minutes, and just really slowly stretch the voice and stuff. So... Uh, recommendations to young singers do take singing lessons it's really really important i took two years of singing lessons with a wonderful woman uh, opera singer called pamela dodds and the exercises that she taught me when i was a young fella are still the exercises i use today and um, touch wood um whoever's up there um i'm not had to drop any of the keys or anything uh, if anything i can probably sing higher now than i could when i was younger so and as you get older you get more kind of depth to your voice as well and um, yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm very lucky. And this is actually an aside from me as a as a mother of a twelve year old with a beautiful soprano voice, but yet to uh, yet to start uh, losing it. Um, did you have Did you have a quality voice before you went through puberty? Um, I'd love to know. You know the the realistic opportunity of of you know young kids with beautiful voices. Do they go on to have voices that uh, that stay beautifully tuned? And... Were they? Do they should do the puberty thing? Shouldn't have too much. To, I mean, it can affect m m mainly in boys, but but it shouldn't have too much to do. I mean, I was I was always singing at school, so I was singing. I went to uh, Church of England school, so we were all singing hymns. I was in the choir. I was in the special choir at secondary school, singing at the Guildhall. So I was always singing, and I think that's the key to. It. I mean, you look at someone like say Tom Jones, for instance. I'm, I'm going from young to very old, but you would expect someone. Of Tom Jones's age to his voice to diminish, but he's always kept it. He's always looked after it. He's an amazing singer, an amazing guy. And I think the key to it is is to just through that puberty stage, just nurture it and just but don't over sing. Just gently. the key to it, don't over sing. Yeah. Just gently go through that period 
and then you should come out the other side having your voice fully beautiful and intact. Fabulous. Okay. Um, you recorded an album of Euro House material in the 2000s, but it remains unreleased. Do you think this will ever see the light of day? What album was that? Of Euro House style. Did I? <laughs> According well, I to our researchers, them. you did. <laughs> if you didn't, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I've, I've recorded lots of like techno stuff over the years. I've done some grunge techno. I mean, I really like techno. I mean, I, I, I'm really into it. So, so uh, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I might put an album together of all that stuff. Yeah, I've worked with Milk Inc and Mark and Claude. Uh, all sorts of people. Um, and they used to basically send me tracks, backing tracks, and I used to just put a melody to them and, and lyrics and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, maybe actually, maybe that's an idea. All right. There you yeah. go, something different. Um, you made a cameo in the video for "Set Adrift on Memory Bliss" by PM Dawn, which sampled "True." Do you like the song, and how did the cameo come about? Love the song. I think it's great. I, mean, I don't have a problem with sampling. Some people do. I think it's fantastic when you take. A, a piece of music and then create something different out of it. I think that's great. Uh, yeah, I mean, they were Prince and Jarrett. We met them and um, we knew their manager, actually. And uh, and then they just said, oh, do you want to come over to Miami? And I oh, yeah, all right. Okay. All right. <laughs> so I had a week in Miami and made a video and that was it. So on a similar vein, uh, Sarah's asked, what do you think about bold using gold uh, that, that is an ongoing advert? <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 I don't have any decision making over anything that Spano Belly does. I left the band. Um and uh it's not something I would have done. But no. fair I, enough, fair enough. Uh, I think we just touched on this, but you seem to be able to turn your voice to any genre. Is there a genre that you wouldn't choose to perform? Maybe techno. <laughs> I don't think I'd make a good rapper. <laughs> I'm not from Compton and Watts so, <laughs> or whatever. No, so I don't think I'd make a good rapper. I mean, I like some rap music. I actually, I think it's incredibly clever how they do it. But I like rap with a bit of melody. I can't. I'm not into the that kind of gangster misogynos, misogynistic uh, rap kind yeah. of stuff because yeah. I just think it's very pleasant. But, you know, but some of it, when it's got some melody, I mean, Stormzy, I think he's an incredible artist. Yeah. Um, so I think if it's got a bit of melody, hint of melody, uh, then the lyrical content is, is sometimes quite amazing, yeah. Okay, someone had to ask, but Adam's asked um, the Spandau question. Uh, is it 100% dead and buried, or is there a possibility that there, you know, could be smoother waters at some point, maybe for a special occasion? Try 150% and that's your answer. <laughs> okay, fair but, enough. Unfortunately, I'm, I, listen, I'm, I'm one of these people that, that things went too far. Uh, and as I've said in many, many times, the guys have never been honest about why I left. They know why I left. Um, and their actions were pretty vile, to be honest. And um, so it just got to the point where I just could I didn't want to leave. But it just got to the point where I just couldn't do it anymore. Um it's a shame for the fans, but don't yes. blame me. It's not no, my fault. Fair enough. Um, so there you go. So once I say no, it's, it's no. Uh, that's the end of it. Uh, I'm really, really happy. I've, I've got five beautiful kids, beautiful wife, family. Um, I'm a very lucky boy to still be doing this after 40 odd years now. Yeah. And um, yeah. I've got the fabulous TH band. So And they are brilliant. Absolutely. Um, so Vicky's asked, do you get to enjoy the other artists performing when you play at festivals? I'd like to think of you dancing and having fun around in the background. <laughs> uh, Vicky, uh, I, I love watching other bands. I, I get a real kick out of it. So you'll have to often find me at festivals if I've got time and I'm not doing interviews and stuff. I will be at the side of the stage by the mixing desk checking out all the other acts. Not because I'm checking them out, just because I like listening to music. And, you know, I don't get a lot of opportunity to 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 go and see bands. So for me, when I'm at a festival, it's a fantastic opportunity um, to with a little cold fizzy beer uh, <laughs> to check out the bands, yeah. So you reserve the Jack Daniels just for for barricades then. <laughs> It is, it, yeah. It's just, it's just, it's just my toast to the audience in barricades, and it just kind of 
clears the tubes, so I'm to speak. I'm sure it used to be port. Didn't it used to be port? I used to gargle with port. Ah, oh, there you go. That's where I got my mix up. This has been busted a couple of times, so I, <laughs> I can't breathe very well. So I get quite congested. So um, so the port sometimes I gargle with it before I go on stage, but the jack is to, you know, just lubricate. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, so Sandra has asked, what, what did you learn about yourself doing Reborn in the USA? Which was a, such a classic. I absolutely loved it. I don't think I learned anything about myself. I just had a lot of fun. So <laughs> I remember, you know, myself, Pete Cox, we're, you know, great friends, and Lee John. And we, every, you know, city we got to in America, I mean, it was, you know, I love America. And um, and we were sort of, sort of checking out, oh, where's the latest, you know, like great restaurants and stuff like that. And then we, I remember we were in, we, we, we weren't singing enough, so we decided to go to a karaoke bar. I think it was in Nashville. <laughs> And uh, and the rest of the guys are going, go, go on, Tom, get up and sing True. And I was singing all American stuff because I like a lot of American music. And I was like, oh, I don't want to sing True. Come on, go, come on, come on. So I finally got up and sang True. And by all accounts, this American goes, hey, who's a goddamn hell? Does he think he is Tony Hadley? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> um, well, almost on that subject, Fran has asked, um, we also asked this to Peter Cox, but in light of your friendship, your amazing duets with him, and the fact that you've toured together before, is there any chance we could get a little Go West Tony Hadley duet at Forever Young this, this summer? I don't know. I'll have a word with Pete. <laughs> he said he's game if you are. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Oh, no, OK. That could be cool. Yeah, OK. I'll, I'll have a word with Pete. Yeah. yeah. We'll, leave, we'll leave that one as a, as a possibility in, in your hands. Okay. Uh, then last but not least, and I had to include this, as I said, we got so many varied questions, but Daisy has asked... Why are you really called Big Tone? Because <laughs> I'm pretty big. Uh, Fair and I, I'm, I used to be six, um, j just a tad under six four. Uh, I'm actually, I've, I've actually lost a couple of inches. I've got discs and stuff, you know. But, um, yeah, so, but I'm still, I'm just, just under six foot two. So I'm still quite tall. Uh, I've just always been called Big Tone. Uh, you know, my son's six foot five. Wow. My oldest son. Uh, you know, I have to look up to him. No, he's six foot six. No, he's Gosh. six foot six. So, uh, yeah, you know, and, um, you know, I, I keep myself, hopefully I like to think reasonably trim. It gets more and more difficult as you get older, mm. I tell you. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so I'm a, a sort of, you know, I think myself, Simon Le Bon, Boy George is, is another tall fella as well. Mm -hmm. Martin Fry, another tall fella. Um, Bill Oakey, another yeah, tall big fella. All tall. We're, we're the boys of the 80s. Absolutely. <laughs> Maybe there's a band reunion there. <laughs> the no. big boys of the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> the boys of the 80s. Oh, dear. Oh, no, no. Dear. <laughs> there are too many egos in that band, I tell you. <laughs> well, that's absolutely brilliant, Tony. We've we've really enjoyed talking to you today. Thank you for answering some some slightly bizarre questions, but uh, you know uh, you've got a huge fan base over here. Um, you were amazing last year. We can't wait to have you and and the Tony Hadley band and the lovely Lily, who I adore, uh, back in the summer this year on Saturday at Forever Young Festival. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, a huge thank you to the amazing Tony Hadley. Well, thank you. Very much. Looking forward to coming over and I'll have a word with Coxie. Brilliant. We'll keep our fingers crossed for that one. Cheers, Tony. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, love. Bye. Take care. Bye.